Gerard Perigo is perhaps the most overlooked name in the much hyped luxury integrated bracelet sports watch category, with its Laureato model family claiming its own history along with the compelling modern collection. And in this video, we'll take a closer look why the Laureato from GP might just be the single best alternative to the AP Royal Oak and an impressive luxury sports watch all on its own. Let's jump in. Now we're gonna be looking at a watch that certainly falls in the luxury segment for integrated sports watches. If you want something a little bit more inexpensive, I'd recommend the Tissot PRX. We have them available on teddybaldesire.com. This was one of the best sellers on the site last year, and it's for good reason, because if you've ever handled one of these watches, you know how phenomenal they are for the money. The finishing on the bracelets, whether you're looking at the quartz version, which now spans a wide variety of different dial colors and case sizes there too, at 35 millimeters and 40 millimeters. We also did see the recent unveiling of the mint version, which looks pretty great in person. And of course you have the Powermatic versions as well if you are somebody that likes the mechanical option, still getting the same fit and finish, looks great, punches above its weight with many different dial colors to choose from. You have the blue, you have the kind of more that two-toned effect, the black and the green. Check them out in the description down below, teddybaldasar.com. More so than most watches, understanding the backstory of the Laureato is paramount in ensuring that it is seen in the proper context. First Gerard Perigo is actually among the oldest brands in the industry, with Swiss roots dating back to 1791. Developing a reputation as a truly vertically integrated watchmaker with a broad range of complicated in-house calibers, and has recently returned to its independent status in the past year coming out of the ownership group of Caring. So the Laureato we're going to be taking a look at here today has design roots dating back to 1975. Not surprisingly, only coming a few years after the 1972 release of the Royal Oak, but intriguingly, a year before the Genta design Nautilus and Ingenieur SL Jumbo of 1976. GP's original Laureato came in with a 35 millimeter diameter, waffle textured dial, two-tone case and bracelet, and leaned into the leading tech of the period with a high accuracy quartz movement, accurate to one minute per year. Over the ensuing decades, the Laureato saw numerous iterations, including a wide variety of sizes, dial colors, and complications. In 2016, the 225th anniversary of the brand, GP revived the Laureato collection with a new 41 millimeter case size and an in-house caliber to reside within. The collection has expanded even more since, with one of the latest iterations being the one that we have on hand here with the striking 42 millimeter green dial variant. Without a doubt, the most striking attribute of the Laureato's format is the integrated case and bracelet that is, as we've mentioned throughout this point, reminiscent of the design styles of the 1970s. With this being said, GP's near peerless laurels as a watchmaking house come to the forefront in the complex faceted architecture and finishing presented by this case and bracelet design. At 42 millimeters in diameter and a svelte 10.9 millimeters in thickness, including the very lightly domed sapphire crystal, the watch wears true to size, if not slightly smaller with a 49.1 millimeter lug to lug, feeling proportional and feeling right at home with the rest of the dimensions. For what it's worth, a 38 millimeter Laureato was also recently launched along with a striking copper dial, which might present a better proposition for those that have smaller wrists. Concentrating on the central case for a moment, we have a relatively flat case top presenting horizontal brushing as it curves sharply towards the lugs, where the case meets the near vertical sides. A delicate slender bevel is highly polished to add visual interest, as well as the dramatic transitioning point between the contrasting surface finishes. The raised bezel also showcases a brush finish atop with polished sides resting over a platform polished steel perimeter. This octagonal bezel shape has inherent ornamentation as a byproduct, but Secondly, it actually serves as a functional point, actually screwing into the central case. At three, a polished 6.8 millimeter screw down crown rests without the safety of crown guards, complete with an engraved GP signature. Between the crown, the bezel, and exhibition case back, the modern Laureato is water resistant to a more than adequate 100 meters. Meeting the case at a broad 15 millimeter center link that thankfully pivots to aid with wear, the bracelet offers a classy H-link format that tapers from 25.7 millimeters at the widest point to 18 millimeters, terminating with a hidden dual deployant butterfly style clasp. Like the case, the bracelet is exceptional with polished surfaces on prominent center links, 
horizontal brushing for the outer links and hits of polishing along the outer edges to make for a comfortable fit against the wrist. As is the case for many bracelets with more of a butterfly style clasp, micro adjustment is limited with no on the fly adjustment and a couple half lengths here, which in turn could make finding a perfect fit challenging for some. Set within a dome sapphire crystal treated with anti-reflective coating makes for a clear view of that striking multi-dimensional dial lying beneath. Looking beyond the integrated case format and octagonal bezel, the other aspect of this watch that begs for comparison to the Royal Oak is the dial, which leans into this hobnail style texture. The Laureato's green dial surface is striking and employs a few design touches in the process. At the outskirts, the dial has a raised PVD coated black minute track, neatly printed in contrasting white, while applied pencil shaped PVD indices are set just within. The baton style handset follows the black trend while also making room for a sizable helping of white superluminova. At three, a color matched date wheel rests beneath a straightforward aperture. At 12, prominent GP is applied with the brand text just below while Laureato and Automatic are printed at six. As a final note regarding the dial, the loom is serviceable given the limited thin real estate it occupies within the markers in the hands. But now when turning the Laureato over, we catch a glimpse of the manufacturer caliber, the GP0-1800. Beautiful finish caliber speaking to GP centuries with creating their own manufacturer movements. Beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour or four hertz and composed of 191 individual parts, the 1800 offers distinctive architectural elements with its bridges, as well as a reasonable degree of heightened movement decoration for a watch of this level. Geneva waves are utilized across the central bridges in a line pattern with circular waves on display for the rotor. Both the rotor and bridges showcase some fine polished beveling with the micro perlaging sitting at the top of the base plate visible at the movement's perimeter. Looking at the functions of the movement, the 1800 has a screw pin regulating setup for fine tune adjustment with ink block to assist against the adverse effects of shock to the balance oscillation. The watch has a power reserve of 54 hours that is of course ahead of the third party options from brands like Salida or Etta but it is more of a middle of the pack reserve with the rising numbers that we have seen in recent years. In terms of timekeeping, this one demonstrated solid regulation coming in at minus three to plus one seconds a day when being tested across five different positions. And finally, it does feature a hacking seconds function when pulling the crown to the farthest position to get the most out of that accuracy. So now let's unpack looking at the GP Laureato. In general, I think this watch is overlooked. And I think a big reason for that is just the oversaturation of the market around integrated sports watches. But this one sits in an interesting spot. Now let's talk through some of the considerations for both the negative or maybe not so good end and then also the positive end. I think some of the things that people will bring up immediately with this watch is going to be that it is more of an inspired design. One thing you have to consider though, and that's why I really stress the importance of knowing the history of this watch, is it came out in 1975. If you're going to be critical of this, you probably could be critical of a lot of other watches as well. And that includes the likes of Patek Philippe with the Nautilus. So I think that's important to understand when looking at maybe being critical of this watch, even though the hobnail design of the dial might lean a little bit more into that direction than normal. And then finally, just not having some on the fly level of adjustments within the bracelet and not having an abundance of half lengths might make it difficult for some to size this one up. I did not have any issues, but I could see that being some problems for some. But now jumping into why I think this watch is actually special and maybe why you should give it a closer look if you like this style of watch. Now, number one, this is going to not be an inexpensive watch, but it falls in a range where there's going to be a lumping of together a lot of different uh, brands that are trying to make this style work. The ones that I would typically associate this one with would be Zenith, the DeFi Skyline at the more attainable end of that spectrum. Then you have the Chopard Alpine Eagle in the middle, and then you have this. And when you're looking at a 15500 from AP, you're talking about a retail price around $24,000, $25,000. This is around fourteen three. So this is going to be significantly less expensive and also considering that getting it at retail price for the Royal Oak is going to be a pipe dream for many. But this watch to me, especially with the new 38 millimeters, if I was going to pick an alternative, and I'm not saying that you should go for an alternative, uh, but if you wanted something that is going to be of that styling, but also has its own DNA and design and history to go along with it, I think that this one would get the edge for being the most intriguing for me personally. 42 and 38 millimeter options. The dial is, I think, fantastic. It looks great. Of course, this is not like a hand guilloché dial with this price, but it still is beautiful. And this watch just wears well on the wrist. I need to try out the new copper 38 millimeter, but 
because of how they angle the end links here, this is not as much of a presence as I would say some other integrated sports watches that I have put on the wrist. This one wears a little bit more true to size than some others out there. So yes, we've seen this oversaturation of the market of integrated sports watches, but the GP Laureato is one that in a segment that it sits within might just be the best alternative to the Royal Oak, but also a watch, again, that has its own laurels to rest on. But all right, guys, that's my take looking at the GP Laureato. What is your take on this watch? Have you ever handled this watch in person? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, are you an owner of one of uh, the pieces? I'd love to see comments as well about that. If you found the video helpful, you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. Also check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.